What's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel and to the very first episode of this road back to the stage. This has been a long time coming, like way longer than I ever anticipated. I've been talking about doing this forever and I've made every excuse in the book to get on YouTube and share this journey. And I told myself that this time I would start doing this at 12 weeks out. We are now at six and a half weeks out, but we're doing the damn thing. So that being said, thank you for being here. Um, if you are new here or new to my Instagram or wound up here from Fearless as Fuck the Podcast, I wanted to start doing these YouTube videos to not only show you guys a look into my more personal life, but to also take you on this journey to get back to the stage with me. Um, I'll have to make an entire YouTube separate to this to kind of explain why I switched over from WBFF into FMG, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter other than this organization aligns with me so much more than the WBFF ever did, and we're very excited about it. That being said, we are six and a half weeks out from one of two shows that I'm doing this year. We are doing FMG Los Angeles in September, and we are doing FMG Mexico in November. The other really exciting thing about this organization is they have implemented a new category in between bikini and fitness called Bikini Athletic, which for those of you who have been following along, I personally struggled with this quite a bit because I never felt like I was soft enough for bikini and then I would get a little bit... I'd fall short for fitness and that was really frustrating. So I always kind of felt like I was right in between. And now that they've opened up this new category, it's kind of a little bit of a mix of both. So that being said, it also has been about, man, almost three years since I've stepped on stage. So my body has changed quite a bit. I've grown quite a bit. I've made a lot of new changes in my overall body composition. So I still am kind of curious as to where I truly will fall once we get down to the nitty gritty of showing up on stage. So I am more than likely going to be doing a couple different divisions here in Los Angeles. Right now, I have myself down for Bikini Athletic, and I also have myself down for Bikini Open 35 and up because I have made it into that age category, which is kind of crazy, but that's neither here or there. So we're doing bikini 35 and up open and we are doing bikini athletic and I am tiptoeing on the idea of even doing fitness 35 plus one, because I missed the theme wear already. And two, because I just have this like feeling inside that I might need to experiment with that just a little bit and see where I show up. And at the end of the day, I'm training to look the way I want to look and how I feel my best and that goes into my training on a daily basis. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to placing in shows, you have to understand what they are looking for in these particular categories. You can't just show up looking your best and expect to do well in whatever category you want. You have to show up in the category your body is best suited for if you want to do your best. So we're gonna try a little, a few different things. Um, also very exciting news as well, I have accepted a coaching position as an FMG official posing coach with the Posing Institute run by Tani Sheehan out of Australia who is an absolute beast of a competitor, person, and poser um, just in general and I'm honored to be working with her in this company. So I actually haven't gotten to meet her in person. Um, I've just known her through the organizations and through social media, and we're all going to be actually competing together in LA. So very excited to see the team and meet the other girls in person, do a couple photo shoots, and then have that camaraderie of just being around the different girls um, that I have met before and that I also haven't met before for this competition. So I'm just really excited to step back on stage again. I honestly didn't think that I would be after the WBFF fell apart because NPC is just not the vibe for me, respectfully. It's just not something that I want to do. And this is. So I'm really excited and I hope I can share a lot of insight with you guys. I originally filmed a uh, YouTube for like I think it was like two years ago when I did Worlds for the first time and the content got ruined and I was so bummed that I never even posted it. And I just sat on it and I felt so 
bummed out that I never actually got to utilize it and share that journey. And so I really want to make up for that, not only for myself, but for those of you who I am looking to inspire and or are interested in ever, you know, doing a fitness journey of your own, whether that's to step on stage or just to, you know, become a better version of yourself. So I hope these YouTubes are enjoyable for you guys. This is my first time ever doing them, so we'll see how it goes. We just, I said, we, we collectively just got to the gym um, here at Savage, the gym that I work at here in Las Vegas and where I take my in-person clients. So we're gonna go ahead and get a workout in. I am ready to go with all 17 bottles of liquid here. I have in this one my water and I normally just put my BCAA, EAAs in here as well as L-carnitine. Um, extra energy, hydration, electrolytes, keeps me hydrated throughout the day. Um, in here this gets refilled multiple times. This is my pre-workout here. I have the PE Science Prolific pre-workout as well as their high volume um, nitric oxide pump formula and I also have some creatine in here which I have implemented into my routine this year and I have actually been loving it so much. I truly feel like it's been giving me extra strength, extra energy which has in turn made my workouts so much more productive. So I will drink this pre and intra workout and then I have my shake stocked and ready to go for afterwards. This has my whey protein and my glutamine in it for recovery. What else? Obviously I already have my coffee because I'm wired, so I am ready to go. Let's go get this workout. What's up guys? It is Monday, August 5th, 2024. We are officially just a few days under six weeks out from FMG show Los Angeles, which is so freaking exciting. And it's about time I showed up on YouTube because I've been talking about this for a very long time. Um, wanted to take you guys through a full day in the life of a competitor six weeks out from a fitness show and show you guys what my day looked like. So normally I really like to start my days really calm, especially during prep just to keep my cortisol levels low, wake up a little, actually waking up a little bit later 
than I should. Um, but waking up, getting my skincare in, getting water in, staying off social media as much as I possibly can. Ice rolling my face, which has been amazing, amazing in the mornings. It it takes a lot of the inflammation away and overall it just feels so good. So I got this little guy off Amazon. I just keep it in the freezer and right after I put all of the hydrating oils and lotions and moisturizers and all the serums on my face, this feels so good. So I'll get this done. Um, next we are going to get into my little morning routine as far as my greens and coffee. And then normally right after I'm finished with all of that, I will take the dogs on a two mile walk and get my steps in. Um, my step goal right now is at about 12,000 steps a day and that's not including my cardio. So to get that out of the way, getting that two mile walk in, which is about 45 minutes to an hour in the mornings, usually gets me almost to about 5,000 steps like right out the gate, which always feels so great. I notice I get really stressed out when I miss that because I'll notice by the middle of the day that I'm not even close to where I should be and I'll know that's going to start trickling down into my nighttime routine which I really like to be done with everything by like 6 p.m. So we're going to go get that done. It's been ridiculously hot in Vegas so that's another reason why I'm running a little bit behind today. It's 8 a.m. Normally I really like to get outside around 7 before it gets too warm but we're going to go get that done come back, have some breakfast, and get into our morning cardio session, which is the Stairmaster. Um, my coach had given me an option to split it up into two sessions at the moment and do 25 minutes and 25 minutes, but what I'm finding is it is a lot easier on my mind to just get in there and get it done. So that's what we're gonna do today. And also, my coach requested a couple check-in videos this morning because I had started implementing in some vegetables last week that I never really had before to kind of fill up some space in my meals because we're getting down to definitely being really hungry and um, was causing some gastric pain for me, some a lot of uncomfortability. So I had a ridiculous amount of bloating and visibly was uncomfortable. So I've um, spent a couple days kind of reformatting my meal plan, getting back to some basics and letting some of that inflammation and bloating go away. So I'm gonna pop on my bikini and my heels really quick and just do a little check-in video and send that in and then we're gonna get to it. Okay, so as far as my morning routine goes, first things first is I have these superfoods, greens and mushroom blend from Pea Science. I love having this first thing in the morning before I put acidic coffee in my stomach. Um, superfoods are rich in micronutrients, and if you don't get enough greens in, this is a really ooh, this is a really good way to pop it into your diet first thing in the morning. I just have a scoop of these, and it also has a mushroom blend in it, which is great for neurological functioning. So I'm going to put this as well as a scoop of glutamine, I think it's about five grams per serving, into a cup with cold water and just drink that down really fast. Glutamine is really good for your gut lining and I've noticed um, this is really also really, oh my God, I can't talk this one. It's really great for recovery and really great for your gut. Let's try that again. This is really great for recovery and really great for your gut. So I will put these two together and do this first thing in the morning. Just give this a little stir. What's really great about these greens is they don't taste like lawnmower clippings. And if you know, you know, because some of these greens taste literally like grass. And it's fine. It's greens. But I do like to be able to get it down and not choke on it. So this, this is really great. And if it's really cold, it does not taste bad at all. So let's drink this right down. I also actually don't want to fill my stomach up too much because I have to do that check-in. So I actually might sip on this for a minute while I go get that done and then we'll get into some coffee. So as far as check-ins go, 
This prep has honestly been a little challenging for me and I think mentally challenging because I'm not seeing my body respond as quickly as it used to in previous preps and mind you there is no prep that's ever going to be exactly the same and that's not to say that it's a good or a bad thing um, that I feel like I'm not responding like I used to but it's just different and it's a little bit more slow and controlled. I have taken a proper off season and this prep has just been different. Um, I think I'm in my head because there was a week about two weeks ago, maybe almost three weeks ago at this point, that I had a really good friend of mine get married and I made a decision to go to Greece for the week um, to take that trip to be at my friend's wedding. And I also made the decision to stay on prep while I was doing this, make as many conscious efforts as I possibly could to stay on track and on point as I possibly could. But obviously that's not... Obviously, that's not the easiest thing to do when out of the country, and so we did have a few little mishaps. So when I got back, I knew not only was I going to work, have to work extra hard, but I knew I'd be faced with some inflammation. I knew I'd be faced with a little bit of just backtracking I had to do. And although my coach and I are confident that I have gotten to that point, it's just in my freaking head that I am not where I need to be. Um, but that's one of the mind games that you have to play with prep and what happens is you wind up comparing yourself to everyone else's journey and being like, oh my gosh, they're more shredded than me at this point. Am I that far behind? Should I even do this? Like, And you start comparing yourself to everyone else's positionings in their prep. When everyone has a different coach, everyone has a different methodology on how they're doing their preps. So I had to make sure that I am not doing that to myself and I'm just staying calm and present and checking off the boxes of doing what I need to do for my own sake and just take it from there because I'm not going to lie there were a few days where I was such a head case about this and I'm just trying to remember that I am in such a normally calm position and I want to stay there so so that being said I just wanted to share that little bit of vulnerability with you guys because body dysmorphia is a real thing and it can really get in your head even when you're confident with yourself it's just the nature of the beast when it comes to competing and when your body is something that you're looking at on a regular day-to-day -day basis so it's just something that I'm faced with but I feel like I have a pretty healthy conscience and mindset about it now where I can understand that that's what I'm going through and it's not that I'm seeing myself different from what I am. Am I probably, probably more shredded than I think I am? Absolutely, but I'm not deciding to talk negatively about myself and that's really, really important. So just show you guys like a little quick update of where I'm at six weeks out. Now that I got that over with, I really need to get some coffee in my system because I feel myself fading fast. So we're going to do coffee, walk, and cardio. Then we got breakfast. Then we're going to head off to the gym. All right, coffee. Favorite time of morning. I'm going to show you guys how I make my absolute favorite coffee every single morning. Um, I've been doing this all prep. The only thing that has changed a little bit is the amount of creamer I put into this. But I'm going to show you all the ingredients. So you are going to first start off with getting a double shot of espresso. So I have my espresso machine right here and I am just getting myself set up for a double shot. I'll usually kind of keep that hanging out for a while while it cools off so it doesn't melt my ice, but after that's all finished, but after that's all finished, we're gonna add it to the ice. We're going to fill the rest of the cup up with this Starbucks cold brew. I make sure to get the unsweetened ones. You can see on the back that this one is only 15 calories and it doesn't have any extra added sugars because the mistake you can make is getting the sweetened iced coffee from the store from Starbucks and I think 
oh my gosh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the sugars are really high. And then we are just going to use one serving of Chobani creamer. I love these creamers so much. This white chocolate, um, white chocolate mocha one's my favorite, as well as the coffee cake. And let's see, the for 15 milliliters, 35 calories, you have a 1.5 gram of fat, and you have five grams of carbs. So I use one serving of this. I'll put a little dash of sugar-free maple syrup, and then I will add vanilla and vanilla and cinnamon. This, this concoction was actually inspired to me by Founders Coffee down the street. For me, they have a French toast ice latte, which blew my mind, but the sugars were through the roof. And I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just make a more sugar-free option at home and also save the money? So this is my little concoction, minus the white chocolate mocha using the Cine Coffee Cake Creamer, which I think I'm going to swap this out for, makes that almost perfectly identical to what I get at the store. So let me just show you. Okay, and that is it. Here we are at my favorite coffee of the day. The one thing I did forget to add to this, which sometimes I do, is a scoop of Rise Mushroom Coffee Powder, and I add it to this. Um, I do have the mushroom blend in the greens I have in the morning, so it's not totally necessary, but I've just kind of gotten in that habit, and I really like their products, so I'll usually add a scoop of that to this as well. So what's also great about this coffee is with everything, with the sugar-free maple, with the creamer, with the coffee, vanilla, cinnamon, it only winds up being about 55 to 60 calories for this entire coffee and it tastes amazing. So save myself some money and save myself some calories and some sugar by making this at home. So this is how I start my morning every single morning. All right, breakfast this morning. We are doing the Hulk pancake, the green pancake, Laura Lee Chipotos inspired. Um, I've been really wanting to switch up my breakfast a little bit and normally I just have the standard things that I always have, which are normally some version of oats, whether they're overnight oats, regular oatmeal, eggs, egg whites. Sometimes I'll mix it all together and make like a big bowl of what looks like fluffy mush, but the egg whites and the oats taste really good, especially when they're baked over the oven. So this morning we are going to make that all into a pancake. If you grind down your oats in a blender, that is a really good way to add them into the pancake. And when you add something that has a little bit of moisture, whether it's cottage cheese, banana, pumpkin, zucchini, something along those lines, it makes the pancake fluffy and keeps it from being dry and gives you more of a regular pancake feel versus like a protein pancake. So we're gonna go ahead and mix all of those ingredients up in the blender and then see how it goes. Right, Oliver? It's my little morning buddy. Come here, bud. Come here, buddy. Come here, Ollie. Come here, Ollie. Oliver's scared of the tripod. Oh, Bubba's. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Yeah, come on. Come on, good boy. <laughs> You're such a good boy. You don't belong on the counter, though.
I just made this for the first time and it looks incredibly watery. Like definitely not like the videos I watch, but we're gonna go ahead and see how it goes. So low medium heat on the pan. We're gonna pour it in and just see how that goes. think this is working if I can figure out if I can flip this without totally ruining it I think it needs a little bit more time okay trust the process Christina low and slow and then just flipped it when it had bubbles all throughout the middle and there was none of the liquid on top here so that actually looks pretty good I really like this seasoning I've been using it it's the coconut cream seasoning from feast mode And then we're going to use a serving of the sugar-free maple syrup. So one serving is five calories. It's about 30 milliliters. Normally I eyeball this, but since we're getting a little bit closer to showtime, I'm just going to measure it. So this was definitely a trust the process kind of recipe and I'm glad I got to do that on camera for the first time with you guys because it definitely did not look like it was going to work out the first time but we did it. This is the pancake. This is the pancake here. So in this pancake, we wound up having one full egg. We had three ounces of egg whites, handful of spinach, about 75 grams of berries, 20 grams of almond butter, vanilla, and cinnamon. protein ice cream is literally just a cup of like almond milk or milk whatever milk you like plus a scoop of protein and that's it like that's that's all it is so you can eat the whole thing <laughs> this is my macro so it's all about light ice cream and 
you run it one more time and it's like soft serve. And I bought, um, well I've, I've used all the pea science flavors, but there's that boba tea protein line. I don't know if you've seen it, like pop up on your Instagram ads, but there's like Thai tea, Vietnamese coffee and taro and they are so fucking good. So I had this like Vietnamese coffee soft serve that tasted like a frappuccino. You can eat the whole pint and it's so satisfying because it's volume, you know, and you can eat it in a cut because it's just almond milk and protein powder. Maybe like some stevia if you want something sweet or like put, you can mix in fruit. There's so many different like, um, some people add like a teaspoon or a tablespoon of the sugar-free jello mix and that actually makes it like fluffier. Um, but there's like a whole Instagram page dedicated to creamy recipes and, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I've even like chopped up those perfect protein bars, the ones that are like peanut butter, coconut, and chocolate, and I've like put some on top of it, and it's like so bomb. So fucking good. And you can probably have more because your cal not maybe not right now, but when your calories are high, you could like stack that pint with like peanut butter and like I don't know, cacao pieces, strawberries, whatever. It's just Okay, I gotta stop talking about this. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Oh, my ass hurts. Okay. All right, done with today's workout. Had a really good back session and just did a little bit of glute accessory work. I'm trying to just add that in at the end of all my workouts right now, especially because I have quite a bit of body fat to lose in my lower half. So I'm just really trying to make sure I hit a little bit of detail work almost every single day. Nothing too crazy, nothing too heavy, but we're gonna finish up here. Gonna go home, post-workout meal, recovery, probably some protein ice cream, and we're going to go do some client check-ins. For those of you who do not know, I have relaunched my online coaching platform, and I'm really excited about it. You don't have to be a competitor. You don't have to want to look like me. All you have to do is want a healthy, happier, better lifestyle for yourself, especially if you're into wellness, mindset, and just improving your overall mood and the way you show up for life. I'm really excited to be launching these programs. Heal from the inside out, not just on the outside. Make sure to message me on Instagram, either on my personal page or on fitandfearlesscoaching.com. Go, go.